The great thing about the substitution method is that it works for any type of equation. Uh, in this example, we have a linear equation, the y equals 3x minus 2, but we also have an equation up here that has squareds in it, um, and it really doesn't matter. The principle is exactly the same. You need to get one variable in one equation alone. and then plug it into the other equation. Now, in this particular problem, notice that my linear equation down here has the y alone. Um, and so I should be able to take this 3x minus 2 and plug it in for y in the equation up above. And that'll work great. So let's go ahead and rewrite that top equation with our new value for y. Um, so I'll have x squared plus, instead of y, I'll have 3x minus 2 squared equals 25. So I just took the 3x minus 2 and I'm going to square it. Again, here I'm squaring an entire piece of uh, an entire binomial. So we have 3x minus 2 times 3x minus 2. And then remember, you're going to have to do FOIL on that whole big expression. Um, so anytime you have that plus or minus in that power, remember, we're going to have to multiply it all the way out like this. So let's go ahead and do this big multiplication. When we do the 3x times the 3x, we get 9x squared. When we do the 3x times the minus 2, we get a minus 6x. Then coming in from the inside, we get negative 2 times 3x gives us another minus 6x, and then negative 2 times negative 2 gives us a plus 4. So if I come over here, um, we'll have x squared plus... We're going to go ahead and write this out. This is going to be 9x squared. We can put those together to get a negative 12x, and then plus 4 equals 25. Here we have x squared plus 9x. We can combine those like terms to get 10x squared. Minus 12x plus 4 equals 25. Now at this point, notice we have an x squared and an x term. Uh, well, we will never be able to combine those because they're not like terms. So instead, we'll need to get one side equal to 0 and then either factor or use the quadratic formula. So let's start by subtracting 25 from each side. That's going to get us 10x squared minus 12x minus 21 equals 0. Now with the 10x squared here and the 21, there's a lot of factors there to try. I'm just going to go ahead and get started with the quadratic formula on this one to solve it now. Um, I'm going to let a be 10, b will be negative 12, and c will be negative, oops, 21. Let's fix that. So when we go in and try to solve this, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Plugging our values in, that's going to be negative negative 12 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 squared minus 4 times 10 times negative 21, all divided by 2 times 10. All right, so let's go through and see how we can do. The minus, the minus negative 12 there will become a positive 12. Let's see what we can find inside of that radical symbol there. Let's pull up the calculator. Um, so here we'll want to do negative 12 in parentheses squared minus 4 times 10 times negative 21, which gives us 984. Um, and that's all going to be divided by 20. Now we can check real quick to see if 984 is a perfect square. Square root of 984, and it's not. So we could simplify this with a perfect square, or by put, checking for perfect squares and pulling them out in simplest radical form. For this one, though, let's just go ahead and uh, get decimal values that we'll be able to use for the other parts of the problem. Um, for the first one here, what we're going to have is 12 plus radical 984 divided by 20. And on the bottom, we're going to have 12 minus radical 984 divided by 20. And this will give us our two different solutions. Um, now keep in mind that what we're solving here for, based on this equation here, is values of x. So we're finding, um, finding x values. And it looks like we're getting two different solutions at this point. So we have 12 plus radical 984. Get that answer and then divide it by 20 which is, we'll call it 2.17.
And then we'll do the same thing here for the minus. So we'll do 12 minus radical 984. And then divide that answer by 20, which is negative 0.97. All right, so at this point, what, what it is that we've got here is we have two different x-coordinates for two different points. And if I'm trying to solve the system of equations, what I need is the actual final coordinates of what each of those points are. Now, before we go too far, let me jump back up here to the problem so you can kind of picture what's going on here in this one. Here, if we draw the sketch of the line y equals 3x minus 2, our y-intercept's negative 2, our slope's 3 over 1. So we're going to go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. Um, and we're going to get this line that comes down like this. Now, so that's the line. x squared plus y squared equals 25 is actually the equation of a circle of radius 5. And I'm doing a really bad job of being very equally spaced here. But what you can see here with this really bad sketch is that we have, are going to have one intersection point up here. So 2.17 on the x coordinate, right? we should have a value up here. And then down here um, at the about negative 1 x coordinate, we're going to have a, uh, another value or intersection point down here. So these are the two coordinates of the intersection points that we're finding. And we're not really surprised that we get two answers because we were working with solving a quadratic equation. But we still need the, what those y coordinates are. So we can go back and we can use either equation. I would definitely choose the y equals 3x minus 2 here so you don't have to worry about squareds and stuff. And what I need to do is plug in 2.17 and see what I get. And I'm going to need to plug in 2.17, and I'm going to need to plug in negative 0.97 and see what I get. So let's try it. y equals 3 times 2.17 minus 2, and then I'll have to do y equals 3 times negative 0.97 minus 2. And pull up our calculator again. 3 times 2.17 is 6.51. Subtract 2 from that, and I get 4.51. And then when I do the negative 0.97, 3 times negative 0.97, and then subtract 2 from that, and I get negative 4.91. So 2.17 and positive 4.51, negative 0.97 and negative 4.91. And you can kind of see up here, Right, if this is if five is this high point of the circle and five, negative five is the low point of the circle, we're a little bit in from that, and that's where we kind of get those other values there. But algebra was able to find those values very nicely, and you're going to have a little bit of trouble uh, trying to sketch the circle on your calculator with the line in there in this form. So using this method of substitution, even for nonlinear equations, like in this case where we had a circle as well as a line. Um, the process of substitution is fantastic and works very well for it. It's just you have to deal with the algebra that's left behind in those cases.